What's up, family? Professor T is back with some more reacting to undiscovered music. So today, we're going to check out another song I found from Facebook. Got a shout out to the Facebook groups, all of them that I'm in. This week, um, same Facebook group that I joined where I found Gen X's music from whatever that was. It was either last week or earlier this week. And this is... Dwayne Womack Flowers. Make sure I got the dang on name right. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. We're leaving all that in. So, I'm just going to get right into it. There was no bio. So, let's just get right into it without being long winded. And let's check it out together. You know, I was we'll, I was going to start talking after we play it. <laughs> I was hesitant to do this song because this one is kind of old. It came out in 2016. But. I wanted to do this one. There's, there's something that's interesting about it. Too. Shaky Cam. So. This is about the music that we're talking, not the music video. Yeah, the video is not... Well, you know what? I'm not going to say it's not great. Because, I mean, it is strangely mesmerizing. But I'm just saying, like, it's obvious this is not a video that had, like, you know... Hours of time and camera work and planning put into it. I'm just going to be honest with you. It's obvious. Excuse <coughs> Got choked up because the song was so beautiful. But I would just say it's obvious this is just like a, a very quickly made music video, but it's also art, you know what I mean? Sometimes you can achieve art with something like this. It's like it's like Andy Warhol. It's like Picasso. It's, it's different. So, talking about this song, in terms of this song, guys, it's... I'm not going to lie to you, I'm not going to make up an act to pretend. I know that this song is different, okay? But I wanted to react to this because I definitely, I am looking forward to the part where I deliver critiques. And I hope that Dwayne watches this because this has, this has potential. This has got legs to me because like this is interesting. Like, I like it. Besides that, even just like this is, this has like a ton of viral potential. But hey man, I um, I actually am liking this though for real. Like this song is unique, it's interesting. You know, there's a lot that's happening here. There's, there's, there's a lot going on, okay? So, we're gonna break it. Alright. So that was Dwayne Womack, Flowers, new EP, coming 12, 14, 16. So like I said, this song is a little bit older. I was hesitant to react to it because I like to try to react to stuff that's new. But I wanted to do it. So, comments, first reactions. Like I said during the video, look, I'm not going to put on the front and put on an act. That's not me. I'm not, I don't just pretend... But also, I legitimately do like this song. I've said it when I first started doing this. I'm not going to do songs that I don't like or songs that I think are bad. Um, I'm also not going to do stuff just to be negative. Because I know that's how the internet is. They put stuff just to be negative sometimes for the attention. <clears throat> but this song um, is flawed, okay? That's what, how I'm going to word it. It's flawed. But it's flawed in a way that, to me, made it incredibly interesting. You know, because sometimes you don't really... A song, it doesn't have to be perfectly executed to still be interesting. And still be unique and show a lot of creativity, which I feel like this did. Like, I really want to like this song. And there's something about it that, like, it makes me want to listen to it. Because what's going on here, if you listen to it, um, instrumentally... 
uh, once again, we might be aging ourselves here. The Wesley Willis music from back in the day. Do people remember Wesley Willis? For some reason, I get that vibe from it <clears throat> with the instrumental part of it. And just the overall, uh, like the tone and the the spirit of this song here. A lot of times I talk about the spirit of something. You know, like it's it's not like a weird thing when I say that. It's just, you know, people who are artists, you know what I mean. Sometimes you can feel like the spirit of a work, like the the what uh kind of how what kind of spirited of a person was making it like you can tell you can feel like their state of mind and whatnot when you listen to another artist's work whether it's with music or books or movies or paintings you can usually like you could tell what kind of spirits that the artist was in and um what state of mind that they in. you can absorb that if you're an artist yourself and the spirit of this one it kind of the, the state of mind it, it feels like the Wesley Willis stuff because it's like similar to that where it's it's flawed yet somehow is interesting and entertaining that's how I put this song so kind of um what's going on in their instrumental the reason I get that vibe you actually can hear some of like the the more simple lo-fi uh, kind of keyboard sounds which is cool I actually like that for some reason that kind of stuff mesmerizes me I definitely am into lo-fi music. I don't know what it is. The reason why it's mesmerizing to me. But for some reason, listening to like lo-fi keyboard sounds mesmerizes me. <clears throat> so I actually like that. You could hear... It was like a clean guitar sound in there. It it sounded like maybe a drum sample. It didn't sound quite um, live recorded song. It sounded like a drum sample. But this song has got me intrigued. Like, I really want to know more about this guy and, and, and what the music that he does. Like... I wish that he had a bio because I would love to hear more about the person that made this. This is fascinating to me. So other reactions to it with the vocals of it. Um, it's definitely rock vocals. It was um, very loud and very rambunctious, which I liked. So with that being said, that I kind of broke it down a little bit because uh, it was kind of a short song. So with the as long winded as I am, I couldn't get through all of that during the song. It took me like an extra four minutes to the video after the song to get through all the comments of, of breaking down the song. So now let's get to the critiques. The critiques that I have for this, like I said, this is the main reason why I wanted to do this song. So if this gets back to Dwayne, please um let you let me know what you think of my critiques, and um I'd love to hear some of your more modern work too to hear how you've progressed says uh, this one from 2016 and um the critiques that i would give for this one i will start with the vocals now the reason why i always comment on the vocals is because i suck so over the past several years i've studied vocals i've taken lessons with multiple people and because of my studies of trying to learn about how vocals should be performed and how the human voice works i listen to singing in a different perspective now so what i would have to say for that singing that was definitely like loud, edgy rock singing, but it sounded like you might have been straining your voice a little bit. So, um, some of the tips I could tell you for this, because I had a song. All right, this video is gonna be long, okay? But I'm I'm long winded. I'm like the world's youngest old man. I always have to. <laughs> I'm just apologizing now, but I'm gonna tell you a story. There was a song that I wrote. It hasn't been released yet. And part of it is because of what I'm about to talk about. Um, it was a song called Everything I Know. It's going to be coming out soon. Now that I've learned more and I've figured out how to approach it better. But I performed it live. And every time I performed it live, I would majorly mess it up and fall flat on my face. Because what it was, it was like an old school funk song. But it had very loud, screamed vocals over it. Well, usually what it would be, I would get through about the first half of the first chorus. Then after that, my voice would be completely gone and I couldn't sing it anymore. And it would just be coming out as like voice cracking and squeals. Because the way that I talk, I'm kind of a soft spoken, kind of a laid back guy. I don't really scream very much on a day to day basis. So for me, it was straining the heck out of my voice to sing that song to the point that with my band, 
I straight took it off the set list because I couldn't sing it. Okay. So here's the advice that I've learned now from singing something like that. Because it's not just a me thing. Um, if you want to practice that, you actually can... You can learn the right way to do those screaming vocals. But it takes some practice to learn how to do that without hurting your vocal cords and without straining your voice. Um, <clears throat> the way that you do it is kind of... It does start with your breath support, taking a huge breath in. And then making sure that you're propelling that air out of your mouth. Because you got to get it like it that so it's 10 o'clock at night, so I'm not about to scream and get cussed out in the morning by my neighbors downstairs. <laughs> but what it is, you kind of are trying to propel that air past your vocal cords so that they're not touching. They're kind of fluttering like a... <laughs> That's kind of what it is that you're going for. Because there's like a safe zone where you can scream in your voice. And then from there, it's kind of practicing where to put the pitches and the feeling of where those different pitches are when you're doing it. So that's what it would be that I would say for um, the screaming vocals here. I would say that, you know, you can apply a little bit of that. You know, we get the breath support in doing that. <clears throat> but yeah, the the idea is there. Like, I, I totally hear you and I feel you on this one. Like the idea is there. So I would say you just got to kind of builds your voice up a little bit so that you can do that. And then also, you know, because if you go see a singing teacher, they're going to tell you not to do it that way. They're going to... My thing is, I don't like that because it does kind of stifle creativity. So I don't I don't ever tell somebody to, to not do their vocals the way they want to do them. But I would tell you, you just have to practice it and kind of learn the uh, right way to do it safely so that you're not straining your voice so that it sounds the best. Another thing with those screaming vocals, speaking of the matter, because this is something that I've had to do a lot when I've been recording my own music. Uh, sometimes do a little bit of the song. So like just do like the first four bars, then come back to it the next day, then do the next four bars. Sometimes that's another way around that with the um, straining your voice. So that's the critique on that one. The critique for the uh, instrumentals. Um, <clears throat> once again, I actually like the instrumental. Like I said, I find it mesmerizing in some ways. Like it's weird. Like it's mesmerizing. So I like the instrumental. Only thing I would maybe change with it. Um, just maybe mix it a little bit different. Like I usually say, um, as it goes on, do some things to make it, you know, kind of pop at certain points. Because the instrumental, it, it was kind of. Um, simple so it did come off a little flat at times but that's what i would say for the instrumental to, to help with that you know just kind of turn some things up turn some things down as the song goes along you could even another trick is to just simply put some space in there just stop the entire instrumental have it go acapella for a moment then bring the instrumental back in so that's why we critiques with that one so i apologize this was long-winded I know many people probably aren't going to get this far, but for those of you do, for those of you who did, I'm not even going to edit that out because nobody's watching by now. I've been rambling. We're going to see where does it rank under Professor T Billboard chart. So where do I rank this one? Um, I'll be honest with you, in the state that the song is in now, though I found it entertaining. I moved this one up. Hold on. I didn't grab it a second, guys. I moved this one up. Which is number 23 on the charts. Moves up just a little bit. The reason why I move it up here. So right now it's just below Lucky on my way. A Kiki Life. So much like I said way back when I reviewed Lucky on my way. Um... With that song, uh, that song, I, that was the first video where I got mad. That was probably the only one where I actually was like, I did a song I didn't like. However, I still liked it because it was it was bad in a way that made it interesting. Like, it was entertaining that Lucky on my way. <clears throat> Dwayne Lo Womack, Flowers. I don't think this is a bad song. Like I said, I will admit that I feel that it's flawed, but I'm entertained mesmerized and intrigued by it so i move it up above kiki 
Faith Quinn and Animal Revolt, just because I felt like those three songs, they weren't quite, you know, as um, memorable. However, I can't move it much higher than that, because everybody that's higher on the list at this point, they've they brought the heat. So, I think that uh, that's a pretty fair place to put it. And as I always say, this is not a reflection on the quality of the song. The Billboard chart, this goes by the popularity and what's going to be at the end of the year, my recommendations for people to add to their own playlist and what I think will be the most popular and the most accessible to people. And uh, also, as I always say, these are where it's places for now. Things are going to slide up and down as the year goes on. So... I appreciate anybody that's made it this far in this incredibly long-winded episode. <laughs> so, to Dwayne Womack and everybody watching at home, love what you do. I enjoyed listening to this, and I hope all of you did too. And I spread nothing but peace and love to all of you. And I will see you on the next review.